Hello Wolfpack, not to stress you out, not to be the bearer of any kind of bad news at all. It is very much now or never for Bitcoin, and that is because we have seen uh, a move uh, yesterday on yesterday's Daily Candle. That was very good to see, okay? What we saw was a bullish retest of this downtrending red line after a breakout, okay? You can see that wick down there in the yellow circle I'm drawing right now. Bullish retest, jumped straight back up, formed a positive green candle afterwards after a long week to the downside that is great to see all right when you see things like that retesting the the bottom side of a breakout uh that that is what you want to be seeing uh when you see upwards momentum and the reason why this is now or never because if we don't see upwards momentum here and there is a chance we're not going to see upwards momentum because we haven't really seen too much convincing price action in the last four or five days um you know we could slump back down within that uh, within that you know region, that triangle would fall below this line once again, even though we've just held it for support. But we have held it for support. That's great. Uh, but there are a few things in Bitcoin that are still concerning me. Okay, and I'll bring up some of that in this video. So that's a good first step to make. Good first step to make. We broke out, retested it. Usually, what you see after that is upward swings. Okay, so hopefully we can see an upward swing there. Um, but before we get into that, I get into it every Bitcoin video briefly. What I'm looking at for a full confirmation of a Bitcoin upwards trend is a break above this line that I'm making yellow here and a close above it on a daily candle. We need to see some closes above that line. Uh, getting above that right now uh, would be getting above around 50.3K, oh, 55.3K, sorry, closing above 55.3K. Uh, if we get above that region, that'd be great to see. What we do want to be seeing, what we want to be seeing happening is actually an inverse head and shoulders pattern. We get up quite quickly now after that retest and then do something like this and head upwards. That would be so bullish and we'll head to new all-time highs from that point. Whereas if we kind of slump around here and just do nothing much, we're probably going to end up getting rejected and we're probably going to have some sort of larger head and shoulders pattern, which will be bearish for Bitcoin. So it is of the utmost importance that Bitcoin not only moves up, but moves up with a haste, right? We want to see 55K within a week. Okay, within a week, uh, you know, very, very, um, you know, possibly uh, we, we need to be seeing that sooner if we're going to see that inverse head and shoulders pattern. Because if we see this drag out, it, gets, it takes a long time. We're just going to get rejected. We're just going to head down. But that breakout is good to see. Now, what am I looking at on the technical indicators? I'm looking at the fact that, well, even though we're in an upwards trend, and these are the bearish things to look at, and we'll bring up one more bullish thing before we look at the bearish, okay? Another bullish thing is we broke the RSI downtrend, okay? Uh, historically, when we've broken that, like the one here, uh, from January all the way to July, right? There's a line you can draw there. We broke that to the upside. We headed from 29K all the way up to 53K. Did the same thing in September, okay? And headed up all the way from 40K to around 68K within a matter of a month or two, okay? So same thing in July and September. Without a, within about a month or two, we doubled in valuation pretty much. Um, and so, look... We've broken that recently. However, we haven't seen the strong upwards movement that we want to be seeing. We've seen it kind of lagging here on Bitcoin for a few days. And that's not great to see after a critical break like that that usually leads to price swings to the upside very, very quickly. Um, so what it is indicating is that there's a, there's a bit of a lack of buying pressure, even though we're seeing a breakout, even though we just saw a bullish retest. There is still a lack of buying pressure. Uh, a lot of people are very, very likely uh, sitting on the sidelines here and waiting for a break above this uptrending line, which is yellow. And the reason why that's a bad thing is because if people are waiting for that to happen, it might not actually happen, right? You need people to buy for it to happen. Uh, and so that's why I'm not fully confident in getting back in the market yet. Uh, what we do have, though, is, you know, supporting the bullish argument once again, is not only did we retest this downtrending line here after a breakout, we also retested the 9 EMA, which is a very critical thing to hold an upwards trend. You can see throughout the September rally, we held that the whole way up, okay? So... If we lose the 9 EMA, that's a pretty good indicator that the short-term rally is over. We'll probably head back down to the lows here. Um, but we've held it for support. It's currently at 49.9K. We don't want to be closing below the 9 EMA. Uh, usually when you close below the 9 EMA, it represents the uptrend weakening or being over. Okay, same with the downtrend. You'll notice that throughout this entire correction, we were actually below the 9 EMA. Just when we broke above it, we broke above it here on the 21st of December. And we've gone so far from around 46K when we broke above it to around 51K. So... The 9 EMA is very, very, very critical in the daily chart. Um, we don't want to be closing below that at all. Uh, if we look at things like the volume, okay, the volume is showing us something very interesting. And that is that the volume is decreasing rapidly, even in this short-term upwards trend, which is a terrible sign, okay? Because when volume is decreasing in an upwards trend, it means that the buying pressure is simply not sustaining, okay? And it means that Basically, the trend is coming to an end. Same thing with uh, selling pressure or buying pressure or volume in general going down in the downwards trend. In order for a strong move to be made, you need to see increasing volume, right? Decreasing volume 
uh, if you're heading upwards or downwards is an indication that a reversal is on the way. So currently, we're not really seeing that volume come through. So we are in desperate need of a bit more volume here on Bitcoin um, in order to sustain this upwards move. So let's see if we can see that. Uh, what we do have as well, we have to consider, and we'll bring up some of the bearish stuff now. That's the first bearish thing. Second bearish thing is the fact that if you remove all of these lines, what you can actually see is a potential double top here. Okay, a potential double top. Also, it's a cup formation, but it is a potential double top on Bitcoin. And so we need to be watching out for that because we still haven't made a high high yet, right? We've just barely made one, but it barely counts, to be honest. We still haven't made a longer term high high on Bitcoin at all, um, even from the lows here on this short term downwards trend. Uh, if we look at the 50 and the 200 mixed signals, right? The 50 SMA, 50 day SMA is acting as resistance right next to this yellow line and the 200 is acting as support uh, below this red line that we've just retested. We also have the bull market support band, which is another bearish thing we're seeing on Bitcoin. We have rejected from that here and we've rejected from it here and we're currently ranging below it. We need to be seeing, I can't emphasize this enough, a jump above the bull market support band, which is currently 53.2K at the highest. Okay, we need to be jumping above that, closing above it massively. And once we close above that, um, that's going to be an indicator that we're going to break this yellow line to the upside. And when we break the yellow line to the upside, that's going to be an indicator that we can re-enter the market confidently, okay? So the bull market support band is still acting as resistance. Now, the VVPR is something that I haven't talked about in a little while on Bitcoin, and we're going to bring this up now. And we're also going to make some room here and talk about stochastic RSI, which I haven't actually brought up either on Bitcoin for a while. Let's talk about stochastic RSI. The stochastic RSI is actually reaching right now a top, right? It just peaked out. It is basically maxed out at 100. Now, this isn't a massive deal. Sometimes this thing maxes out when we continue heading upwards. I mean, it maxed out here on October 6th when we were at around 40, 55K, and we still managed to go all the way up to 67K before it meant anything. But it is something to keep in mind that we are maxed out on the stochastic RSI, and that is an indicator that potentially, along with the volume, uh, that we, we might not be able to break through this bull market support band. Let's wait and see, though. It's not really a most convincing indicator. It's just another argument for the bearish side. Now, on the VVPR, the volume profile, we are coming up on a dip in the volume profile at 53K. This means that the road to 53K should be relatively easy. However, when we get to 53K, uh, there is a lot of resistance all the way up to around 57.5k, right? So it will be very hard to get past 57.5k. If we get past 57.5k, according to the VVPR, we're basically guaranteed to go new all-time highs, okay? Um, but, you know, the first step is obviously that yellow uptrending line of support. And what you will notice as well is 53k uh, is actually where the bull market support band is sitting. So there is resistance in that region as well. So we're very much on Bitcoin, basically right below critical resistance, okay? Uh, and we're also right above critical support. As you can see on the VVPR, right? Uh, the, the kind of no man's land is between around 54K and 52K. That's the no man's land in which no one really knows what's going to go on, okay? Once we are, we're above that yellow line, everyone knows it's going to be bullish. Once we're below this red line, and once we're below probably 46K, 47K, everyone knows it's going to be bearish, okay? Uh, so it's interesting to see. What do I think will happen based off all of my research? Well, I think the Bitcoin probably has a pretty good chance of breaking to the upside here, okay? Just based off the technicals, I think that Bitcoin has a good chance of breaking to the upside, retesting this line, and then heading downwards, okay? I don't think we're going to see a full recovery on Bitcoin at this point in time. If we break that yellow line, my view on that will change. I think we will, okay? But as of right now, I think we're in a dead cap bounce, okay? I have no reason to believe we're in anything other than a dead cap bounce. So let's look at the weekly chart and understand why I think that uh, right now. Well, what we can see on the weekly chart, let's go to the index quickly. Uh, on the weekly chart, what we can see, and we'll go to logarithmic scale, and we'll delete all of the indicators we have here, and we'll bring up the 50-week and the 200-week SMA. This is one of the reasons, and we'll just turn up the brightness on this. Sorry, guys, one second. Turn up the brightness so you guys can see them quite clearly here. What we can see is the red line here is the 50-week SMA, and the 200-week SMA is the green line. What typically happens in a bull market is we go to the bull market top, right? We have an all-time high. We come down to the 50-week. We bounce off of it in a dead cat bounce, right? We dead cat bounce off the 50-week, and then we trend downwards into, uh, into the 200-week SMA, okay? Within about a year, okay? 2017, same thing happened. Topped out, bounced off the 50 week, okay? Trended downwards to the 200 without a bit, without about a year. 2019, same thing happened, miniature bull market in 2019. Topped out, bounced off the 50 week, trended downwards to the 200 week SMA and the COVID drop. And in this bull cycle, you could say the same thing, okay? We had a, uh, 
We had a, a peak here. We've come down to the 50 week. We're probably going to see a little bounce. Okay. I think it's going to be a dead cat. We're probably going to dead cat uh, and reject off this line here that I've drawn, the yellow line that I drew on the daily chart. Reject off of that at some point and then come down to the 200 week uh, within, you know, about a year from now. The only problem with this is that we can't really confidently say when the peak is and when the peak was in because we often bounce off the 50 week. Okay. Even in previous bull cycles, uh, we have bounced off the 50 week a couple of times in those bull cycles on retests. But what is most important? and what is most weird about this cycle and the reason why this cycle has been so different to other cycles not only on a fundamental level but also on a technical level is because we haven't seen this many retests of the 50 week before usually you only see a retest of the 50 week after the top okay what we've seen is actually a retest here retest here and a retest here so we can't be 100 certain that the top is in uh, based off this theory but what we can be certain of is if we lose the 50 week which we haven't really done yet right we had a fake out below and we're bouncing right now if we lose the 50 week confidently uh, that's going to be an indicator that we're going to be trending down to 200 week SMA, okay? But as of right now, I would be inclined to believe that this is a dead cat bounce until we break above that yellow trending line. Let's get back to the Coinbase chart so I can show you once again. Until we get back above uh, this yellow trending, one second guys, sorry. Uh, this yellow trending, up trending level of support, until we get, get back above that, I would be inclined to believe that this is a dead cat bounce and we'll be heading downwards on a longer term scale. Once we get back above that, I can change that opinion. Uh, but ultimately, this, this video is to cover some new stuff. The Stochastic RSI, the VVPR, and also this retest we've just seen, this bullish retest. And to really emphasize the point that Bitcoin has to move now. We've got no more time for this. We've got no more time for this lurking around. It's not going to lead to anything bullish. I can assure you of that. Every single time that we lurk around after making a slight move, we end up crashing, okay? We can't see another crash on Bitcoin. If we do, it can't go down to the lows we saw previously. It has to be a higher low. But there is no real good place to make a higher low below this red lines okay we have to make it above those red lines and that that means we have to move upwards first because there's no space for that okay so bitcoin needs to move upwards here there's no if buts and ands that's the scenario within the next week next few days i'd say has to move upwards if it doesn't move upwards it's in big trouble thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed catch you in the next one